Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is actually 7.34. Um, additions to the agenda. I didn't see any on the select board report, but are there any? No additions to the agenda. Review of minutes, February 27th. I have a couple of small changes. Eight pages of minutes. Congratulations on capturing in such detail the long discussions that we had on that night. On page six, the first full paragraph, Complete Streets is kind of a concept of program and uh, it would be clearer if the first line there read, Mr. Etnire noted a mention of Montpelier Complete Streets Committee and asked. Can I do the Sure. And one of their Carl, were you done or do you have more changes? Because I have a few. Uh, why don't you go ahead and I'll see. I, I'm pretty sure I have a second one, but I'm not seeing it right now. So in the first um, page, and by the way, Deirdre, awesome minutes. Like, I just have to say, they made me weep almost. I mean, you got really good information capture. On page one, Melissa Gorham is uh, listed as being there twice. Wow. On page three, there is a very minor typo. It says... The audit made recommended reviewing. I don't think you, I think made should be omitted. The audit recommended reviewing. Do you I'll see where that is? I will first tell you. First sentence, or draft first sentence. Mm. What's this? On page three? Page three, yeah. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Um, Mr. Hewitt? Oh, it's, um, it's the third paragraph. Mr. Oh, Hewitt also noted the audit made recommended reviewing the is that that sounded wrong. I mean, I think yeah. made should be out. Okay. And page page five, it's a very small typo. It says something about I'll try to find the exact paragraph. It says red field instead of rec field. Oh. But it was Mrs. McFadden asked how the red field parking lot. That is one, two, three, four, That's five. Four paragraph five. Is that it, Amy? That is it. Okay, I found the other one. It's on the final page. It's just above the motion to adjourn. Uh, the previous motion isn't clearly stated as a motion, so it should just say motion colon. And then if you could, if you could uh, bold both the word motion and the motion itself as it's practice, that would be great. That was me, not Okay. Uh, the other th uh, one little typo is Mary Stone's listed twice in the select board. Did you get that one already? Stone. Listed you. twice on the in-person in public attendance. It's Mary Stone and then it's Mary Stone at the end. Mary Stone at the beginning of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she, was, she was a dynamic president. She really didn't want to lose that. Yeah. <laughs> you did a good job. Um, that's pretty minor, but. I move that we accept the minutes with those minor changes. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Um, okay, so the minutes are done. Public comment. I see public, public comment, no comment. What's that? Oh, you're no, talking I'm to just yourself? Talking to myself. No, yeah. okay. That means you're either going nutty or you got money in the bank. <laughs> is that what it means? Yes. <laughs> I just thought it meant I couldn't read I think it's the well. first. <laughs> uh, 740 p.m. Discuss Murray Bliss Barnes Roads Ash Tree Removal Project Request for Proposal. I'm really just bringing this to you all. I, I called the previous town administrator to find out how this process worked. And yeah. then as I've been going through it and working with the Resilient Roads Committee, yeah. it occurred to me that 
it was never mentioned bringing it to the select board in any way. And I thought that I should do that. And then also I'm a bit confused because we have a purchasing policy that outlines the RFP process, mm -hmm. but it doesn't appear as though we fully follow that policy for these types of projects. Um, I reached out to Times Argus, for example, part of that policy is an ad is supposed to be taken in Times Argus and no ad was taken last year mm -hmm. in this time period for this. Mm -hmm. So I did create a public notice that's actually posted on this building, posted just like we do any other warning for a meeting. Yeah. I did not take out an ad yet in Times Argus, and I wanted to ask you all this tonight to see if that was Where is necessary. It? It's posted here. Yeah, I post, post office. At post office, four corners. Um, and then I put it on the website. So our policy states it goes on the website. It gets posted in the typical Good public enough. areas, yeah. And but also that an ad is taken out in the paper, but it doesn't appear as though we've we've done that. I, I and, and I, I reached out to Times Argus to ask, just in yeah. case I was overlooking something. Mm -hmm. And I, I it doesn't. I speaking with Jeff, he Jeff Queto, um, with the Resilient Roads Committee. He's like, I don't think we did that because we kind of cover our bases with yes. every forester in the area and. Mm -hmm didn't seem, but I just wanted to bring and that to you all had, because it, it is a deviation from, from policy. So I just. Sure. We've had three bids every time we've done it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you have. Yeah. So I just wanted to bring this to you all because yeah. I don't know. In yeah, my, thank, in my thank history, you. from an internal control perspective, when there's a policy and you don't follow it, you want to document that in some way. So That's, if we are comfortable with not following the policy, with eliminating the need for a Times Argus ad, I wanted that documented in minutes that the select board was comfortable with that. And I'm, yeah. I'm comfortable in doing that if we discuss it and find that it's the best way of doing things. I'm not comfortable in doing that just by forgetting about it. So thank you for bringing yes. that to our so, attention. Definitely. And uh, if, if the Resilient Roads Committee is comfortable that uh, they have reached out and themselves notified all the individuals or companies that would be likely to respond to the RFP, then uh, this is a, you know, there's a fairly limited universe of, of those. Exactly. So I'm I'm comfortable with foregoing the, the time that Argus said. Yeah, they are currently working with landowners um on cool. you know any docu we have submitted all the documents to the landowners. So they've been notified. They're giving us their feedback um in regards to you know the handling of debris and, and all that kind of fun stuff. So um and they will they're work already working on following up with any that we have not received. So as you all know, they've they've done this before. They are certainly yeah. mm -hmm. very good at working with landowners and working through this process. So mm -hmm. all seems yeah. to be going well so far. So we will be looking at the bids at our March 20th meeting. Yes. Our next mm -hmm. meeting. Okay. Okay. So that's it on that item, I believe. Mm -hmm. The next item. Rachel, you could turn up. You could turn up at your camera again. Yeah. I hope she left her town up, her sound up. Yeah, we're 10 minutes early. but yep. I thought I was going to get to eat dinner. All right. <laughs> okay. So. So you see in the yep. annotated agenda yep. what um, I did receive from Rachel. Yep. So I'm bringing it to the select board. Thank you. Do you want to present this uh, orally? Rachel, uh, so you, could you unmute yourself? No, I um, I I think I've said what I had to say at the last select board meeting, and then you asked me to write it up, so I did. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. you guys can take it from here. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. It looks good. That's it, a a good reason for putting together a committee and a good charge. Okay. Are you going to be on that committee? Yes, I would like to be on that committee. Okay, excellent. Do you have any ideas for other people? That's a good question. I was just asking Paul. He came up with one name, but we can think about others as well. He he yeah. thought Ken Hertz would be good because he's got an engineer's mind. What um what number of committee members do you think is appropriate? Um I don't know. I, I maybe five people gets unwieldy after that. Well, Gina, I think Gina should participate if she can. I know Gina, you're out straight, but you've got all that experience from Florida. I would probably sit this one out if it's in the immediate 
coming up in until we're fully staffed, I would I would like sense. to sit back. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to, we're leaving on March 22nd and we're going to be gone until the end of April. So I don't know how quickly people want to move. That's up to you. No, so you know, we, the, we can put it out on front porch forum. Yeah, we, um, and we can do that. And then uh, we'll see what happens. We aren't going to get this committee put together before the snow season is over. So whether we do it in March or in April, I don't yeah. think it's a big deal. You want to wait until you're back in town? And I mean, if it can, if people feel like it can wait, um, yeah. When are you well, back, we, back in town? We'll be back. At, we'll be back the last week of April. So I probably wouldn't okay. be ready to start before the first week in May. Okay, but then we can put it out on front porch forum and other ways of publicly looking for people. Right, and, and that can be see, done beforehand. You know, that doesn't have to wait until that's what time. I was thinking. We could do that anytime after town meeting, which is tomorrow. We could start to reach out and get some see if we can get some interest. Good. Great. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dave, what do you what do you all think of I mean we, we were saying earlier for the other business in town meeting that we'd wanted to discuss something. I don't think this is the one that we had just wanted to discuss, but uh what do you all think about just raising the question of okay how'd you get through the the big storm the power outage and how could we be helping each other better we could yeah we may be looking to fill up the time so yeah. that's a good thing to write down and remember yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. of course the other one's a town meeting question it's yeah a, oh that that's a great discussion yeah could last for a while yeah there you go because you got to fill up the time however to fill the food ready yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the next thing is warrants. Oh no! Oh my God, Carl! I almost forgot. The next <laughs> item. <laughs> the next item is one of Carl's favorites, and Gina always participates. Also, it's discussion on town management in light of COVID nineteen. I usually defer to a uh, vice chair. Very good. You, you have you have done the homework and and uh, put into the select board menu memo that uh, according to what I now consider to be the pretty much worthless CDC community level tool because of uh, lack of accuracy of reporting, Washington County is at, at low um, community transmission. Um, what I was going to say last time, but uh, deferred because it was a long meeting. Um, was I had just come from the performance of the high school musical in Montpelier, and it was a completely packed auditorium. I mean, they, they were setting up risers in the back, so it wasn't quite standing room only, but they were making chairs where there weren't chairs before. And I got word that some people I knew who went to an earlier performance of that came away at, from with COVID from that or some other thing. And then uh, the next day I went to uh, a concert in a church in Montpelier and that church was completely full and people were singing and cl clapping. And uh, I hadn't seen any church that full since the beginning of the pandemic. And at neither of these events were there any efforts to encourage masks. Um, and most people I think did not have masks. And there weren't any efforts to take uh, names and contact information of people, asking for people to get back and uh, tell someone if they got COVID. So that got me reflecting. We used to talk about super spreader events. And I'm wondering, now do we just call them events? You say a super spreader event? Pardon? Instead of super spreader Yeah, events? now we just have events. And we have no idea knowing oh. which ones... Uh, uh, no way of knowing which ones are super spreader events. That does put out a kind of a negative um, message about an event if you call it a super spreader event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you going to say that about town meeting? And so, <laughs> well, that that's why I think it's Attendance important. Will drop. <laughs> that's why I think it's important to encourage uh, the uh, the masks. Yes, and um, and we are taking at least somewhat attendance. Uh, we're checking in the voters and yeah. you know it probably wouldn't be that's a good question it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to ask people if they experience symptoms of covid and or test positive in the next what five days to let the town office know so that we can 
So we, maybe we would cancel the next town meeting because it would be better than that. <laughs> so we could put the information out there. We wouldn't tell anybody's name, but we oh, would yeah. at least say somebody came down with COVID after town meeting. Right. Does that make sense? So you're going to um, say a town meeting, if anyone had uh, COVID symptoms within five days after town meeting, that they please should let the rest please, of us know? Please let the town office know. And what are you do about it? Uh, uh, could put it out on front porch for him. Call all the people that went to town meeting. That could be something you could do. <laughs> so gross. Well, I, it's just tough to me. So many people are out and running in the world without masks. I don't I know. know how you can do identify. Yeah. Meeting. Just, you, just, you, no, no. Beyond some of the protocols that were in place, I think that's why you don't hear the term super spreader event. No one's tracking this stuff anymore. Yeah. It's no one's saying right, wrong, or different. They're not. No, so, the, the, the point is not to um, to talk about who got it at town meeting, but to talk about who is possibly contagious at town meeting. So, what's so at, at what point would we? I don't want to put a post every day if people start calling the office every day because they're sick with COVID mm -hmm. after town meeting. So, what time period so that we could do this once? Yeah, I would if calls. I was were think, received. This is something that I'm just thinking of in conversation with Seth. So uh, I would want to do a little bit of research on it, but I think five days, something like that comes to mind. Okay. So they should call the town office if they get COVID within five days after town meeting. If if they get COVID symptoms and or test positive. I don't know if it makes sense. I'm just thinking aloud. Yeah. I think you know, Scott Scott has a comment if he can if he can make it. Yeah, it's just so practical. I you know I served lunch today at the Unitarian congregation um handed out lunches and to 20 or 30, 20 people i didn't go that close to them but how do i know if i come down with covid because it's 24 hours later that i showed up at town meeting and nobody's reporting this stuff to the state anymore you know the the, the numbers are low but i don't think they're realistic it just i, I understand the it, you know it, it makes sense from a from the perspective of we want to be safe, but the exposure that we're all having just walking in and out of the co-op or anywhere else, it, yeah. I just think it's impractical to try to do contact tracing that no one else is doing anymore. Yeah, that's basically what you're talking about too, is contact tracing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I just think it's impractical from my perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, thinking about further, okay, what would a person do with this information if, if they got the information that somebody had come down with COVID five days after town meeting, uh, they might take a test. Uh, but um, you know, maybe it's a good idea to take a test anyway after you go to a big event if you're susceptible. So, okay. All right. Well, any more um, discussion on COVID nineteen? No. No. Okay. Okay. Um, so the next item on our agenda is our warrants, and because there's only two people here. I think we better just authorize me to sign. They're tiny anyway. Yeah. Yes. And I have already. Yeah. So yeah. I think we need a motion to. I motion. I move to authorize the chair to sign the regular warrants. I second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, the next thing on our agenda is the town administrator report. It's fairly short and sweet. Um, I'm out of the office Thursday and Friday and will not be checking emails. Um, okay, good for you. And maybe. Um, and the town clerk's office will be closed on Thursday, um, basically Thursdays um, until the office is fully staffed. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the future meeting schedule, which I, oh no, I did take off at six town meeting. Um, March 20th, April 3rd, April 17th. So if everyone could just check travel schedules and let me know if those dates work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20th, uh, no, the third I'm not here, but I can zoom in. Okay. So, yeah, third I'm not here. Okay. Oh, we, mm -hmm. we got to go in executive session. And lastly, mm -hmm. would be an executive session. I move to... Enter executive session to discuss a personnel issue. I second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you all for joining us.
Oh, yeah, we, we've come out of executive session. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Come out of executive session, no action taken. I move we adjourn. I second that move to adjourn. Very good. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. <laughs>